So in this video, I'm going to explain the theory behind how H-bridge motor control circuits work. So the main components in an H-bridge circuit are these MOSFETs. And there are two different types of MOSFETs. We have PMOS and we have N MOSFETs. We also have in this circuit opto isolators to protect our microcontroller from large uh, voltage spikes and unforeseen current draw. And I'll explain how opto isolators work uh, near the end of the video. But most importantly, uh, we have the transistors. So a quick recap on how transistors work. So for the NMOS uh, transistor, in order to turn it on, the voltage between the gate and the source needs to be greater than a certain threshold. Now, the threshold voltage depends on what kind of uh, transistor you're using. Um, for example, some transistors might have a voltage threshold of two and a half volts. So if you, um, if you apply uh, five volts up here and you have zero volts down here, then you would have five is greater than 2.5, and then you would get uh, current flow uh, through the transistor. And the PMOS is very similar. Um, the only difference is usually people connect a, a power source. Um, we'll call this V bat for battery. Um, and the voltage difference uh, is usually uh, negative for the PMOS. So you would have, let's say, 5 volts up near the source, and you would have 0 volts down here. So VGS would be 0 minus 5, which is going to be negative 5 volts. So you would take negative VGS is greater than your voltage threshold uh, as the condition to activate the switch. So in this case, we would have negative of negative 5 uh, greater than, let's say, it's 2.5. 5 is greater than 2.5. So you're going to get a conducting path uh, between the drain and the source. So that's really all that matters, uh, or that's, that's all you need to know for the basic uh, theory of operation of the H-bridge circuit. And uh, just some nomenclature here. The NMOS is referred to the uh, as a low side uh, switch. And that's because uh, the source, which is zero volts, is usually uh, connected to ground. And inversely, for the P-MOSFET, you have uh, the source connected to VBAT, or uh, positive voltage. So you would call this a high side switch. So if we just go down to our circuit right here, uh, we have the, the high sides and we have the low sides. So, okay, well now we have uh, a bunch of MOSFETs in our circuit. Uh, why do we care? So the reason we care is because we can turn on uh, certain MOSFETs uh, in order to have different current paths through our circuit. And let's say we have uh, a load between these two outputs. Uh, so most commonly, this load would be a motor. So you have your motor uh, between uh, the two outputs. Now let's say you turn on Q1. So then you have current going through here, and let's say you turn on Q4. And then you have current going through here. You now have a complete current path through the motor. And this will cause the motor to spin. Now the cool thing about this circuit is you can just do the complete opposite in order to turn the MOS, uh, sorry, to turn the motor in the other direction. So let's say you turn on Q2 and you turn on 
Q3. You then get the motor spinning the other way. So now we have full uh, control of the direction of the motor. And that is uh, the, the purpose of an H-bridge. So now I'll explain what these uh, U1 and U2 components uh, are for. So I mentioned before that they're called opto-isolators. Opto meaning, uh, or, or referring to the optical property of how they activate. So these arrows right here uh, are depicting um, a photo, photo electric power transmission. Uh, that's the fancy way to say it, but it's pretty much just light or uh, more specifically infrared. So when you apply a, uh, a current from this input, uh, through the pin one and pin two of this component, you will then activate uh, pins four and five. Uh, so this is this is like a uh, this is like a BJT right here. So this is a transistor, and when you activate the opto isolator, you are then turning on the current path. And what's cool about opto isolators is there's no direct uh, metal connection between these two sides of the device. So there's no way to damage your microcontroller if you have your micro here on the left. And you have your H-bridge over here. And usually you'll have different power sources uh, for your motor and for your microcontroller. So now your microcontroller is safe um, because motors are very noisy uh, electromechanically uh, or electromagnetically speaking. They produce large voltage spikes every time they like switch directions. Um, and the switching effect of the MOSFETs can also produce uh, large current draws, uh, especially if they are shorted. And you just want to protect your microcontroller from these large current draws. Um, so yeah, I, I just mentioned that it's possible to short your circuit. And that's if you turn on Q1 and Q2 at the same time, or if you turn on Q3 and Q4 at the same time. So you're going to want to avoid doing that, or you're probably going to destroy uh, your MOSFETs. So now, the way um, the MOSFETs actually turn on here is, uh, like I mentioned before, uh, with the, the basic theory of operation of the transistor, if you have your power source up here, which we've called V motor, and let's say you, you turn on pin M11 of your microcontroller, we know that this will allow pins five and four of the opto isolator to conduct. So if you have your ground down here and you have zero volts uh, on pin four, then you will have zero volts on pin five. And we know from before that if we have, we'll call this VS, because this is the source of the PMOS, and zero volts at the gate of the PMOS, then V GS is going to be VG minus VS is equal to zero minus VS. And we design our circuit such that negative VS will be greater than the threshold of the PMOS. So then the PMOS will conduct. And we'll do the complete opposite on the right side of the circuit. Uh, meaning this will be off, and we'll turn this one on. So the way Q4 gets turned on is if we do not uh, set this input, motor, motor pin 1, 2, high, uh, so we will not set this. In this case, 
pin 5 here will not be 0 volts. It'll, in fact, be V source. Because if, if Q3 is not conducting, then that means VGS is, is less than the, the voltage threshold. And so if VG is equal to VS, then the difference between VG and VS um, will be zero, which makes sense. So, so we'll have zero less than the threshold, and it won't conduct. So this is, this is VS, this is VS, so Q3 is off. However, Q4 will be on because Q4 is an NMOS. And for NMOS, we have VS minus, uh, sorry, VG minus VS, which is going to be, um, it, so I should clarify, this is VS of the PMOS. So we'll have uh, VS PMOS is equal to, um, oh, sorry, I'm getting mixed up here. VG, of the N MOS minus VS of the N uh, MOS needs to be greater than the threshold of the N MOS. So VG, as we know, is going to equal the VS P MOS uh, minus zero because the source of the N MOS is zero, which is greater than some uh, threshold of, of the N MOS. And then it'll conduct. Um, so yeah, that's how you turn on either Q1 and Q4 at the same time, or Q3 and Q2 at the same time. And as we know from before, that'll give you uh, both direction, directional control of your motor. And that's pretty much it.